Hello. Uh, I want to take a minute to go over how I go about collecting fueling error charts. And this is one, it's kind of like the first step to getting everything dialed in correctly. I'm not going to talk very much about the actual t math tuning or fuel injector scaling or whatever that would result from this knowledge. The only thing we're going to talk about today is getting uh, the actual charts and how you go about creating them. Uh, please kind of bear with me. This is my first time ever trying to make a screencast, so I don't really know what the hell I'm doing. But anyway, so you can see <clears throat> here I have a big thing full of lots and lots and lots of logs. Uh, so if I go in here, I tend to segregate all mine into one spot. And here we'll grab a couple of various logs from uh, recent times. Here you can see I'll go ahead and grab one combined. You see a lot of these I have like port only combined, DI only combined, and so on and so forth. That's because a lot of the time I've been introducing E85 lately and one of the problems that I have is that as you introduce E85 you then have to scale direct injectors in addition to the port injectors and when you do that it of course introduces another variable which is more complication and the main complication is that your AFR error can be different uh, between port and direct injection so let's log into BRZ edit here so you can see in a stock map. So if I pull up a stock map, uh, BRZ edit stock, let's just pull up like a A01C stock American 2013 BRZ. So if we pull this up and you look at fueling, I'm sorry, injection control, uh, total GDI port ratio, and you can see this is uh, cold and hot. So Long story short, what you see here is that there are times in your cruising range, and as you start, there's an RPM switch where you'll go from 50% port injection to 100% direct. And when that happens, if you have a significant error, uh, say for instance, you have your port injectors dialed in perfectly. So you have very low trims when you're running on 100% port injection. But your DI, which you now have to scale as well because you're dealing with uh, E85, so you, you, know, you have to adjust for fuel density, if your error on the direct injection side of things is you know, either more significant or in the opposite direction, then when this switchover happens right here, you will have wild swings in your AFR because you're driving along, it thinks you know, it applies uh, trims based on load and it doesn't seem to care <laughs> which set of injectors is using or what the ratios are at any given time. So if you happen to give it a same, if your load stays constant but you pass from here to here, then the trims don't know that, hey, hey, we're not using 50% port anymore. Now we're on straight direct injection, so I have to use some other trim. It's not that smart. So it'll just say, oh, well, you know, I still have to apply this, you know, 5% trim that I was applying when it was 50-50, but now it's straight direct injection and the, the difference is different, so it swings and it creates all sorts of craziness uh, in your AFR. So long story short, what that means is that the amount of fueling error, which we're about to look at, across the MAF range that you have on the direct injection side of things, it needs to be the same as the amount of fueling error in the same direction that you have in port uh, so that your trims remain correct as you switch between these different modes and ideally of course you want them to be both minimal so uh, that's why you see in here if you look around I have a lot of these where it's like port only combined DI only and that's because what I'm doing is enabling only direct injection so I'm effectively going in here selecting all this and zeroing it out and that will, and then I'll go ahead and save that, flash it, log it, uh, flash another map that's the exact opposite that is port only, go, flash it, log it, look at what the various uh, fueling error is, and then I'll make corrections to whatever I need to make to try to get that as close in line as possible. And the goal is that I want to be able to get my fueling error down as low as possible without having to... Uh, 
mess with the math scaling. And the reason why is because I've found in you know the limited amount of time that I've been doing this that when you get in here, the further away from perfectly logarithmic that this thing becomes, like for instance, say you come in here and you're getting all your corrections, it's like, oh, you need to go, you know, up a bunch here and oops. What the hell is that? Okay. Oh well, yeah, so anyway, if it says, oh, here, you know, you, it needs to be 2.66, and here it should be 2.855, and you notice that this these things will start getting kind of lumpy over time as you apply these corrections. That is not what you want. If, if you find yourself coming in here and you notice, oh, look, this all has to be, you know, 13% increase, and you get something like this, chances are you have something else that needs to be addressed, which... Uh, we can talk about later, but long story short, to go about getting this information is really, really fairly simple. I'll go ahead and open up one of the logs and I'll show you uh, precisely what it is that uh, we have to log to get this. Uh, and actually I'll do that in Excel because that seems to make sense. So we're gonna go ahead and open up uh, We'll do here. We'll say uh, the last combined one I can find. This one. So we'll open this up in Excel, and the first thing we're going to do is get rid of all the stuff that we don't want, and then once I do that, I'll show you uh, the stuff that we do want. So this is all just extra parameters that I log that. Really, I'm just too lazy to switch between profiles every time, so I get a bunch of junk in here that I don't actually need. Uh, okay, so we get rid of this. This thing's still recording. Yeah. Okay, so the first thing we we it's a list. Here's what you need to actually log. So we have time, of course, which is default. Uh, fuel trim, long term which of course you're going to want to know it's fueling correction, MAF sensor voltage, intake air temperature sensor, and this is for the purpose of filtering. It's because the MAF will respond very differently based on what the intake air temperature is, so you want to make sure that you're throwing out any uh, cells where the air temperature is significantly high, and that happens a lot because when you come to a stoplight, your intake air temperature will raise you know, very, very high and then as you pull away and start moving it drops back down but you want to filter out all that crap so we do that we also log injection mode uh, for this particular purpose I don't think we're going to need it I'm pretty sure this was running yeah you can see here it's twos and threes so basically injection mode one is direct injection only injection mode I'm sorry inj <laughs> yeah injection mode one is port injection only injection mode two is direct injection only and injection mode three is combined. So, hey, look at that. One of you guys messaged me. Awesome. Uh, so, what we want to do is if you were in here and say you were trying to collect a log that was port fueling only and you wanted to just worry about your ports for a minute, like if you're setting up latency or if you just changed your port injectors and you needed to scale them, uh, then you could go through here and filter on this column for injection mode one and it would throw out all the ones you know that were direct or combined. Uh, similarly, we're going to do the same thing with fuel system status. Of course, fuel trim long terms there because it's a fueling correction, and that's what we're going to need to do some of the math. But uh, the fuel system status starts uh, basically all you care about is two and four. Two is closed loop, and four is open loop. Okay, so now all we really got to do is just filter out all the stuff that we don't care about. So we'll select all the columns. Good, and there might there's probably a better way to do this. I don't really know. I'm not an Excel guy per se, but I usually just use Alt Auto Filter. Uh, go over to Fuel System Status. We only care about two because we're tuning the close. This is well, generally we're going to collect all of our data in closed loop, so that'll be what we care about for this purpose. Injection mode, I don't want to filter on because this is just a combined log, so it's no big deal. So what we're going to use to actually do all the math is this thing called Yikes CL Math Worksheet, or Closed Loop Math Worksheet. And this was created by somebody. Uh, I don't know who. I wish I could credit them. I guess Yikes. Uh, 
yeah, some really smart guy somewhere. Yes, author, yikes, there you go. So he's smart. Everybody clap for him. It's great because this thing works really well. So anyway, this was originally used by uh, guys on the on the ROM Raider forum, I guess, is where I found it. And it was used for WRXs or Subarus, but uh, with a little bit of uh, change to the process and and kind of doing some stuff yourself, you can use it for uh, 86 as well. So the first thing you have to do is go to the math scaling. So we'll pull up this math scaling chart, copy the whole thing, and you actually have to go edit copy to clipboard or else it won't work uh, for some reason. So we'll do that. Uh, hop over here, paste that into there and hit import math scaling. That'll suck all that data in. Then we just gotta come over here, uh, select each of the columns. And first one is time. Uh, so we'll put that in. And then AF correction number one is gonna be the fuel trim short term. AF learning number one is gonna be the fuel, fuel trim long term. Here, we've already pre-filtered everything for closed loop because we went through and selected fuel system status two uh, with auto filter. So we'll just come here, select all these rows, and this thing's uh, process or macro or whatever they call it, uh, it just expects to see closed loop CL in there. So we just paste CL into all the columns, that way it doesn't throw any of them away for the sake of not being in closed loop. Uh, so then we'll go grab our intake air temperature, put this over here, and finally the one that people mostly care about is MAF sensor voltage. And this is because this thing's really made for scaling a MAF sensor, uh, but I use it for all sorts of stuff, just generally telling me where my fueling error is going and whatnot. So you can use it for a lot more than scaling a MAF. I mean, it'd be useful for scaling injectors or and when you do E85, as you'll see later, it's really useful for lots of stuff. So anyway, then all I had to do was go in there and delete that header row that had all the titles in it. And you can see here that we have, what, uh, this isn't a very big log. We have 16,137 rows, so that's not a whole lot. Typically, you want to see between 20, 30,000 or more uh, by the time it gets into this spreadsheet. Uh, and then what you're going to do is click Filter Data. And what this is going to do is it's going to take a, <clears throat> a delta a throttle or a math voltage delta. So it's delta math V over dt. And it is uh, basically a measurement of the rate of change of the math. So what this is saying is that you're going to throw away any data where the change in the math voltage from the cell before it to this cell is greater than 0 0.594 or blah blah volts. Uh, and that's so that you can get rid of inconsistency or inaccuracy that is introduced by uh, throttle tip-in compensations and whatnot, or tip-in enrichment. So it helps you to get rid of some junk data and keep things a little bit tighter. And so I just usually take the default value, it'll guess for you. Uh, and when it's making these guesses, it makes them so that it'll accept roughly 80%, I think it said, of your data. Uh, and here, like, this is the intake air temperature limit. It's suggesting that I set a limit of 88. I'm fine with that. So I hit OK. And then that's it. Last thing I do is just hit plot math changes. And you can see that's it right there. So this is my fueling error at that point, you know, whatever day that was that I made that log. Uh, you can see that, you know, it was a little... And the, the thing here is you don't want to go in and think, oh, well, it's minus a half a percent here and plus half a percent there, so i got to tweak this up and this down. So basically, you don't want to just go in there and like kind of blindly apply all of these uh, corrections, you know, and then go run it again and blindly apply all the corrections and go run it again and blindly apply all the corrections. That's not going to end well. Uh, what you'll end up with is a math curve that's really bumpy and crappy. Uh, what you want to do is you want to kind of look for a general uh, trend. So for instance, like right now, this thing all looks to be pretty well squared up. I'm pretty close to zero. But if this line would have been up here, right, then I would know that I have a scalar somewhere. This is a, you know, a flat line error where it's a steady percentage off. I know there's some... Uh, Vol fuel volume calculation that is not happening properly. So, uh, 
I would affect scaling somewhere. If you have a line where, for instance, it's kind of going this way, where you have you know high corrections at the low end of the math, and then they kind of tail down, and eventually it gets closer to correct as you get to the end. In that case, you'd want to increase injector latency because injector latency has its biggest effect at low math voltage, uh, so and low injector pulse width to be more correct. Uh, so you want to be able to. So if this thing were to look like kind of like that, you would increase the injector uh, dead time or injector battery offset or latency. If it were to be tailing kind of like that, then you would decrease it. And you'll notice that as you get that dialed in, not only will the line become flatter this way as your inject as the latency comes in, but also all these little dots that used to be up here, these this pattern will get much much tighter, and you'll have much less scatter. Also. Uh, as you get the direct injection and port injection dialed in independently so that the errors are very close to correct, you'll notice that this center section around this right here, like 1.5 to 1.9, maybe 2 volts, this is where you're stepping into the throttle just cruising. So this is where a lot of that transition activity happens. And if you look at your math error and you see here it's like this and kind of all over the place, then you can be pretty damn sure that you probably have uh, some variation in error between your two different injection modes because that introduces big swings there. Uh, and it took me forever to figure that out, but yeah, eventually you get that pretty much dialed in and it'll start to look like a straight line. So that's about it. I mean, that's how you go about getting the fueling error charts. If you have any questions, PM me or anything, or I'm sure there's lots of other people that can help you as well. Uh, don't worry about any of this right now. We'll go over that next time. We'll talk about Scaling for E85, which means scaling direct injectors and port injectors independently. And we'll go off step all the way through that from beginning to end in BRZ edit. Unless I get that new ECU tech before then, then maybe we'll use that. I don't know. But uh, we'll go over doing port injectors, including latency and uh, just scaling them in general. So that's probably something people will be doing. Then we'll also go over running the two individual, making sure that all the errors line up, getting things put together, and basically getting the whole thing set up so that you can have minimal fueling error on both sides without having to make major drastic changes uh, to your math scaling, have a really hacked up looking math curve. So that's that. Hope you had fun.